Come, Holy Spirit, and inspire us. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire for Jesus Christ. So may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So as I mentioned in the last sermon I gave in the summer series, I had the wonderful opportunity to spend a week in Oshkosh, Wisconsin at the Jesuit Retreat House for my first ever silent retreat. And I tried to convey in, due to YouTube, I now realize a very lengthy sermon about everything I had experienced. Oh, this will not be as long. But I did wanna practice something I did learn there because I'm still not over that week. And it has to do with using our imaginations to meditate the presence of Jesus in our lives. And one of the things that Ignatius always suggested is that when you read the gospel, you are to place yourself in it. And I had always heard that on campus. And I said, oh yeah, but I realized in talking with my spiritual director, I was in it the way a director is in the movie. I'm on the set of the scene. I'm watching all the characters do their thing. And I'm like, yay, I'm here watching this in person. But that's not what Ignatius wanted me to do. What Ignatius tells us to do is to literally be in the scene. And so I practice with this text particularly. And so that's why we picked this wonderful um, epiphany passage for today. Imagine with me, and however you imagine, walking on the road. I don't know where Emmaus is in relationship to Jerusalem, but I imagine taking that long drive to Vegas. You know, it takes you forever to get outside of Los Angeles, and then you're just on the 15. I've been here enough, I now say the 15 instead of I-15. And you're just hoping you have enough gas to get to Baker. And you're on the road. You go through wonderful agricultural areas, but also barren desert, majestic mountains. But you're just on this road and you're on it. You're on it all the way to Vegas, or if you want to keep on driving, you're all the way to Salt Lake City. Here we are on the road again, and again, and again. Sometimes it's just the walk from my office to St. Robert's Hall, where I teach my one class. And I start imagining what class is going to be like that day. Have the students read? they have something interesting to say. I could lecture if they don't, but rather they talk. And you start thinking about everything. Some of it is what might work well. And so you're kind of rehearsing something that you think will work, or you start anticipating what might go wrong. And then you already start imagining the solutions in case that happens on the road again and again. Every day of our lives is the road to Emmaus. And I wonder whether I can imagine Jesus meeting me on that road. Imagine with me, what's the soil like? Are my feet covered? Or are they sandaled? Are they, what, how do my feet feel? Have I been walking a very long time? And then this person shows up and starts talking to me and I talk to them, but I don't know who it is, but anyone who knows me knows I love talking. So I can talk to anybody and forget to ask their name and all that kind of stuff, have a whole long conversation with them, leave and then like, oh, who was I talking to? So Jesus would easily be able to do this with me. We get to where I'm going, but it looks like this guy is going ahead, but the evening's coming. So I invite this person to stay with me. 
to okay. eat with me, to keep talking to me. Because it seems like we're having a very good conversation. For those who also know me, I would love a conversation of starting with Moses. Let's explore the entire Christological sequence of the Old Testament. That is something I quite enjoy. If that's not what your imagination does, if you remember on Muppet Babies, different people can imagine different scenarios in the same scene. So you change that to whatever you want to talk to Jesus about. And then, as we'll practice in a minute, imagine sitting at the table with Jesus. You don't know it's Jesus. And you see Jesus take the bread. You see Jesus bless the bread. Now in my head, due to working at the Jewish Community Center of Memphis, Tennessee for several summers when I was in grad school, I put the Hamotzi prayer right there. Surely Jesus would say, Hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Right, blessed is the grain that comes from the ground. And I imagine Jesus picking up the cup and blessing it. And I hear, of course, given my own experiences, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'alam Bore Peri Hagafen. Blessed are you, Lord God of the universe who makes the fruit of the vine. And then I picture Jesus handing that cup to me. And that's the hardest part of this imagination. The rest of it is so cinematic, you know. But then Jesus gives it to me. And Jesus says, drink up, Brad. This is a cup of grace. Now, those who know me, and Kirsten definitely knows me on this regard, grace is a word I don't like hearing. And I don't know if it's just that I believe in merit too much. <laughs> I don't know, but I, it's a word that's grown on me. I always joke the beauty of Kirsten is that she has taught me that grace can be a marvelous thing. And then Jesus looks me in the eye and says, Brad, I want you to remember me. And I freeze. And since I don't like long, awkward silences, I then turn to Jesus and say, well, you know, I don't know what to say, uh, sure. And Jesus then looks at me and says, follow me. And then it hits me, just like, the two people at the table with Jesus. Wait a minute. This is the person I have learned about through Sunday school for 20 years, because I grew up Baptist. You, Sunday school goes all the way up to adulthood. I have definitely preached about you. I go to church and hear stories about you. It's you. And as soon as I realize that, Jesus disappears. And I turn to Maggie in this story, it's me and Maggie. And I'm just like, you know, on the road to Vegas, didn't our hearts burn? Maggie would probably say, well, yours might have. Old Testament history is not Maggie's favorite thing. She had to take it in our alma mater because everyone had Bible requirements and it was not her favorite course there either. How did they feel? Well, I don't know. But I know in my imagination how I feel. One of the beautiful things, as I mentioned the children's moment about imagination, is sometimes we imagine in ways that help us become the things we are trying to be. I want to follow Jesus, and I'm too much of an existentialist, and I've read too much Kierkegaard to say I am a follower of Jesus, but I want to be. And I always freeze in terror. This has happened in dreams before where like Jesus comes in your dream, you know, and he says something like, follow me, and you're just like, yes, I know that's what I'm supposed to be doing, 
But Jesus is like, don't worry, Brad. You saw that I was on the road with you. Now, I'm not going to go that little sentimental, and here's where I carried you in your footprints kind of thing. I'm more like the Oak Mills version of that. You know, here's the footsteps when I was walking beside you. Here's the path where I was dragging you. Here's the part where you were kicking and screaming. But I do realize that on all my roads to Emmaus, Jesus has been walking with me. And I don't want that to stop. And of course, in my tradition, we have all kinds of music to suggest that. I want Jesus to walk with me all along my pilgrim journey. And for Ignatius, if I can imagine that, I can realize it's actually true. The road to Emmaus is not a story that took place thousands of years ago. It's every day of our life. Jesus accompanies us. It makes me, as Ignatius would say, more attentive to who's walking beside me. Each day when I now try to practice the Ignatian examine where you overview the day, not to confess your sins, but to find where God was in your day, you begin to realize that little conversation there, that little child who smiled at you at the grocery store. Jesus was there, didn't notice it at the time, but didn't my heart burn when I was in the presence? of Jesus. And so even if all I can do is imagine being with Jesus in the way that those early first Christians were able to physically be with Jesus, I begin to realize that Jesus is already currently here, walking with me, talking with me, giving me advice, giving me warnings, pointing things out that I wouldn't have noticed. And the invitation is for all of us to turn this story into our story. This is our story, the story of the faithful throughout generation after generation who found the little glimpse of Jesus in their everyday lives and decided to go with that and get on the road with Jesus again and again. I'm thankful to be on the road again. Amen.